if you clicked on this video, you probably like ancient history, like ancient structures, ancient inventions, ancient queens, theories surrounding the ancient world, or even human evolution. And if that's the case, then I highly suggest you subscribe to the channel, click that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload, and if you enjoy my work, maybe consider becoming a Patreon or a channel member. So I've made quite a number of videos surrounding Neanderthals at this point in time, and for fun I hypothesized that they were probably the first farmers after evidence was found that they deliberately cleared massive areas of forest in Germany. I also looked into the intelligence of Neanderthals and all the evidence supporting that they were indeed equally as intelligent as modern humans, Homo sapiens, at the same time. I even spoke about the Neanderthal Denisovan hybrid, Denny, and I spoke about a gene variant passed down to a percentage of the population that helped in the fight against the severity of COVID. I spoke about the Campi Flegri supervolcano that might be one of the biggest culprits for the disappearance of the Neanderthals, and I looked into all the possible reasons for their extinction. That's just what I've covered so far about Neanderthals. But I still feel like I haven't talked enough about the Neanderthals. So my name's Kaylee, and in this video, I'm going to look into the list of misconceptions surrounding the Neanderthals and have all these misconceptions cleared up all in one easy to share video. So yes, let's start with the easiest misconception that I have spoken about a number of times already, <laughs> and that's that Neanderthals were dumb cave-dwelling brutes. There's more than sufficient evidence at this point in time that Neanderthals were intelligent, and not just a little bit intelligent, but equally as smart as modern humans. There's even more than a little evidence that they most likely taught us modern humans a thing or two. And if you want to know more about this in depth, I highly recommend watching my video on Neanderthal intelligence. You can see the thumbnail right here, and I'll put a card in the upper right corner, where I cover all the points of evidence that we know so far about their intelligence. Like, for instance, the misconception that Neanderthals didn't bury their dead. We now have more than sufficient evidence that they did indeed at times bury their dead. And we may not have discovered many of their graves, but we do know that they buried their children quite elaborately, but more on that later in the video. Or the misconception that Neanderthals didn't have any homes, that they lived in open caves and that they were incapable of creating a shelter to live in, which is weird because archaeologists in Italy have discovered a collapsed rock shelter, which actually showed that Neanderthals were not only capable of building a shelter, but they were able to organize their living space as well. The shelter actually shows signs of separate spaces for preparing food, for sleeping, for making tools, for socializing, and I think you need to have a little bit of intelligence and know-how to be able to organize the space you live in. There are a lot of misconceptions about what Neanderthals looked like, and this has several reasons. It has to do with the bones that were first discovered and the bones that were later discovered and, you know, misconceptions. Like, for instance, the first reconstruction and thus depiction of a Neanderthal was created by French paleontologist Marceline Boulle in 1911. And this reconstruction was created after the discovery of the remains of a Neanderthal male at the La Chapelle en saint one cave. The remains were approximately 60,000 years old, and the Neanderthal male was estimated to be around 40 years of age which is actually quite old for a Neanderthal at that time. You can see that the reconstruction depicts the Neanderthal male to be slouched, hunched, with bent knees, a straight lumbar spine, large protruding skull, and brutish. Because the curvature of the lumbar spine was missing in this Neanderthal individual, it was immediately believed that all Neanderthals would have the same straight spine. And 
terrible posture that was hunched back, and therefore it was believed that Neanderthals were actually semi-bipedal. <laughs> Which is funny. Therefore, the researchers back in the day believed that Neanderthals hadn't fully evolved much like we did from the great apes that we all came from. Marcel Emboul then went on to further characterize the species of the Neanderthals as primitive creatures, creatures that had no similarities in relations to the anatomy of Homo sapiens, us modern humans. But what he didn't realize at the time when he made this reconstruction is the fact that the skeletal remains that he was reconstructing belonged to an old male Neanderthal, and most likely one with a spinal deformity, as it now seems that the shape of his particular spine was extremely uncommon among Neanderthals, because in the other fossilized remains that we have found, we have not seen this. So the deformity came from the fact that this particular Neanderthal male had osteoarthritis, and this is when the cartilage in the joints wear down in a more rapid rate or have been worn off completely. The lack of cartilage can cause the bone of the joint to thicken and move less smoothly, and it can result in a deformed spine. So after we have discovered more and more skeletal remains of Neanderthals, we can clearly see that their anatomy is actually very similar to that of us modern humans. That they stood upright, they had no bent knees, there was no hunch, and they were fully bipedal, just like us. When it comes to like survival and hunting skills, it was always believed that they only hunted big game and barely knew how to prepare the meat. But we know they used fire and they had the tools to take animals apart. So it seems that Neanderthals actually had a really deep knowledge about the world that guided them throughout their lives. They knew the best ways to prepare some animals like tortoise and how to perfectly take apart a reindeer. The differences of the stone types that they used for their stone tools shows their understanding for the different rock types and the ways of napping each type, showing that they were flexible enough to change their existing techniques for a new type of stone. You need some cognitive abilities to do that. We have also found more than enough evidence that Neanderthals created spears, axes and javelins. Evidence of the spears were discovered at Schöningen in Germany, and this is where archaeologists found multiple spears dating from 300,000 years ago. And these spears were effective for killing an animal at a distance of approximately 20 meters. So this tool and weapon misconception ties into the next misconception, that Neanderthals were carnivores that only ate raw meat which again doesn't make any sense because for such a long time it was believed that Neanderthals were still very ape-like and therefore they, the researchers, didn't think that they would have been capable of controlling and creating fire, although at this point in time we know that they absolutely did. So they would have definitely been able to cook their meat and marrow for consumption. Not only that, but on Neanderthal teeth discovered in a cave in Spain, researchers actually discovered calcified plaque, and this suggests that Neanderthals cooked vegetables and ate bitter plants, like for various purposes, including medicinal purposes. Um, they probably ate like chamomile and yarrow. Another myth is that Neanderthals were incapable of speaking and could only communicate through grunts. <clears throat> really? This is simply a preposterous idea, and recent research has shown that not only did they have the physical capabilities of speech, they also had the cognitive requirements for a form of speech as well. So it's just a dumb idea. A hyoid bone discovered in Israel, uh, belonging to a Neanderthal, was analyzed using the latest 3D X-ray technology, and it's extremely similar to that of us, modern humans. And thus, as I mentioned in my Neanderthal intelligence video, they were most likely not only capable of speech, but they probably had a form of communication, a language, and maybe they were even able to communicate with the modern humans living around them. 
Another fun misconception is the idea that Neanderthals were bad parents, that they lacked the capabilities to care for their children, and that growing up as a Neanderthal was harsh, difficult, and dangerous. Well, of course, if you compare the living conditions of us, Homo sapiens, in modern times with the living conditions of the Neanderthals back in the day, then yes, it was indeed harsh, difficult, and dangerous. But it was no more harsh, nor was it more difficult, nor dangerous to grow up as a Neanderthal baby in a Neanderthal family than it was for a Homo sapiens baby in a Homo sapiens family at the same time. The world was a very harsh, difficult, and dangerous place. Neanderthals took care of their sick children for years, even if it took that long. And if a Neanderthal child died, their burial would be even more elaborate than the Neanderthal burial of an adult. This suggests a strong and emotional bond and shows how important children were to the social groups of the Neanderthals. The next misconception ties into this as well. The idea that Neanderthals were incapable of showing empathy or take care of others. Again, preposterous. There have been numerous Neanderthal skeletons discovered with potentially life-threatening injuries, afflictions, broken bones, and more. And they were completely healed or taken care of over a very prolonged period of time. This shows clearly that Neanderthals took care of their sick members of the group and that they indeed were able to feel empathetic towards each other. The idea that they didn't is preposterous because we even see this in the animal kingdom. We see that empathy is not something that's only for humans. We see that empathy is something that nearly every creature on the planet has. Another misconception is that Neanderthals were incapable of expressing themselves in the form of art, that they had no cultural expression. But cave paintings in Spain clearly show otherwise. They would also wear feathers as a way to express themselves, and I covered this very shortly in my Neanderthal intelligence video. So up until today, people still believe the misconceptions that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens never interbred. Although I wonder how these people would explain the up to 4% Neanderthal DNA that is found in modern humans around the globe. Only the Sub-Saharan Africans do not have Neanderthal DNA within their genomes. They are the only people on Earth, like lineage ancestry-wise, don't have it. If they interbred with others, they do. So the very last misconception that I want to touch on is the complete opposite of the last one. And this is the misconception that Neanderthals are the direct ancestors of Homo sapiens. They come from two distinct evolutionary lines, although if you go back far enough, these two distinct lines have the same origin species. This is why Neanderthals are often referred to as our distant cousins. And this is why we were actually able to interbreed with them successfully and have viable offspring. So yeah, these are the most common misconceptions about Neanderthals, and I'm not sure if I missed one, but if you do think of another very common misconception that I haven't mentioned in this video, then let me know in the comments down below and uh, tell me, you did it wrong. Even after all the videos that I've now created surrounding the Neanderthals, I still want to know more. I still feel like there's so much more to uncover and hopefully as time goes by we will learn more and more about this species that lived side by side with our own ancestors for tens of thousands of years. Tens of thousands of years ago. <laughs> yeah. But with that said, if you enjoyed watching this video then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then I highly suggest clicking the card in the upper right corner or click the eye at the end screen or at the end or whenever, or click one of the links in the description down below. My sources, as always, in the description down below as well. And you can otherwise click a video in the end card. It has a best for viewer, so YouTube does cater to you. I would like to say a massive thank you to all my channel members and my patrons 
Thank you so much for supporting me and my work, and I'm eternally grateful. I hope you have a great day, or evening, or night, depending where you are and when you watch this, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!